All right, in this video cheat sheet, we're going to be configuring an MPLS router ID or hard coding an MPLS router ID. We're going to start off with two baseline show commands of show MPLS LDP neighbor and bindings, and then enable two debug commands debug MPLS LDP peer state machine and messages sent. And then we're going to configure an MPLS router ID. And then we're going to finish up with some verification show commands of show MPLS LDP neighbor and bindings and show MPLS interfaces. Let's look at the network topology. We're going to be hard coding the MPLS router ID here on router 2. It's already been done throughout the rest of the network, so we're just going to be focusing here on router 2. So let's get started with our two show commands that we talked about earlier, show MPLS LDP neighbor and bindings. And even though we have LDP configured globally, which is what we did in the last video cheat sheet, we still do not have a neighbor and we still do not have any bindings. And the reason for that is because we haven't enabled MPLS yet globally and also on what interfaces we want to run MPLS on. But I want you to see how things unfold as you implement MPLS on your network so that you have a full understanding of, of what's going on. So I'm going to enable my two debug commands here of debug MPLS LDP peer state machine and messages sent to see if any activity goes on as we step through this process. Now with the other video cheat sheets with OSPF and BGP, any time you can ever hard code the router ID, I highly recommend that you do that. And you should hard code your router ID to your loopback address or your, your management address that you use for, for things like to source SNMP from or Telnet sessions or OSPF router ID, BGP router ID. I would highly recommend that you use a stable interface such as your loopback or your management interface. So that's where we're going to do. We're going to hard code the MPLS LDP router ID to our loopback zero interface and then we put the force command on here so that it forces it to do it right now, not at the next convenient timeline like a reboot or whatever, but it's, it's going to be done right now. See, it says forcibly change the loopback router ID. So I have now changed the router ID as far as LDP is concerned to the loopback zero interface, which for router 2 is 2.2.2.2. That's the IP address. So let's go look at our two show commands that we started off with with our baseline commands of show MPLS LDP neighbor and LDP bindings to see if anything has changed. I would be willing to bet that's a no. Once again, because we even though we've configured something else, we're basically preparing the network ahead of time to be able to run MPLS the exact way we want to run it before we turn MPLS on. So let's do a show MPLS interfaces to see what interfaces MPLS is running on and as you can see it's not running on any of the interfaces. We've got the columns here all set up and ready to go but there are no MPLS interfaces yet because we haven't implemented MPLS globally and on the interfaces that we want to run MPLS on. We have just enabled LDP or the label exchange protocol globally. So once again, in this video cheat sheet, we enabled or hard-coded, sorry, we didn't enable, we hard-coded the LDP router ID to the loopback zero and we told it basically to force it to do it right now. We forcibly changed the LDP router ID right there. So we started off with the baseline show commands of show MPLS LDP neighbor and bindings and saw that we didn't have anything yet. We then enabled the debug commands of debug MPLS LDP peer state machine and messages sent and we still didn't get any output from that because MPLS is not enabled yet on the router and on the interfaces. We then configured or hard coded the MPLS router ID so that we can have something deterministic and something stable as our MPLS router ID. And then we, figured, we finished up with some show commands to see if anything changed and we discovered that it hadn't.